Hello, this is Sean Mullery from Electronic Engineering at IT Sligo and what I'm going to talk about in this short video is the build process. Now, I've mentioned before about uh, the compile, the compiler and the compile process and I, I mentioned that the, the compiler has a number of different meanings. Uh, one is a small part which is just the, the literally uh, compiling your C code into object code and it has a few passes involved in it. Um, and I also mentioned that uh, the term compiling or compiler is used for the overall process. Now specifically, uh, just to, a better term to use is build process because building it includes compiling, it also includes a thing called linking and locating. Um, so the overall environment that you use for actually making your, your final piece of um, hex code that would uh, be put down on your embedded system, uh, that overall process is often called the build process in order to keep it separate from the other term uh, for compiling. Now, as I said, compiling gets used interchangeably, um, but that it's better to kind of stick to that. So I'm going to refer to this as the build process, and that includes then compiling. So the three things involved are compiling, linking, and locating. And compiling we, we have an, uh, a separate video on it, but uh, it includes the pre-processing and as I mentioned in that video, uh, first pass and second pass. So it effectively it does syntax checking. So it checks to see, does your code look like it's written correctly? Now it doesn't know that you've, you've done the correct thing in your code, it just knows that you've obeyed all the grammatical rules um, when it's checking it. And I'm using the term grammar, that's not the appropriate use, the, the proper term is actually syntax, but just to give you some idea of what it is like for an ordinary language. Each file, each C file is compiled separately and each uh, separate C file um, then creates a, a particular object file associated with that. Okay, so, th so they're all separate object files. Now, important point about this is that <clears throat> uh, there can be um, there can be references in one C file to something that goes on in another C file, okay, or in so, or somewhere else, okay. So that could be something like the printf function, which you don't actually implement yourself; it calls one somewhere else. But you could also have written several C files yourself, and uh, one refers to a function or a variable that's in the other. As part of the compile process, all that occurs is that it checks to see within your C file have you operated that correctly? In other words, have you named it correctly? Have you said that, that that variable either exists in the current C file or in another C file? If it's a function, have you made reference to that through a header file or at the top of your file? Have you made reference to it in some way? And are you using it correctly? It doesn't actually take the implementation because that's done in a separately compiled file. So what occurs then with all these separate object files and, and indeed library and ob a library of object files that the compiler has itself, uh, what has to happen is that these all have to be linked together. So all the object files must be linked together to produce a single file. This is sometimes referred to as a relocatable program or relocatable program file. So what it does is it creates one file or one program. Uh, it's relocatable and that we're really, I'm really saying that here now because on the next slide we'll be talking about the locator. So for the moment you can just assume it's a relocatable program file. The linker does not just paste all the objects together. Remember as I said on the previous slide, there may be references in one file to something that happens in another file and they have to be properly linked up so that when it's referred to or when it's called, so if a function like printf or, or any of your own user functions are called, that it actually goes and implements that and then comes returns back to the other file. So it must connect calls to functions and variables in one file with the actual function or variable in the other file. That is the job of the linker to actually link all those up. Now, if the other function or variable that you've referred to, even though you've referred to it correctly and you've obeyed all the rules, let's say, for example, that it can't go and find it. This could happen because a library file might be missing or there could be some issue with the other file not being compiled properly and therefore the, 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 the proper library or object never got created. Um, so if there's a compiled problem in one file, that can affect the others. Um, so if the other function or variable does not exist in one of the other object files, this produces a linker error. So you will sometimes see this during the, comp during the build process. It compiles, okay, and the next thing is it says there's a linker error. And you click on the linker error, but it doesn't tell you really where the problem is, or it can give you a little bit of information. The problem here is that uh, this is not a syntax mistake that you've made. It's where you've made reference to some function and the linker cannot find the actual implementation of that function or that variable.
Now, where some of you may have come across this before is uh, in using the system pause function. So what used to happen to many students is they would use the system pause function. The compiler would be OK with that because you would have included the header file um, that told you how to implement it. But every now and then, some people would accidentally put, instead of a .c extension on their file, they would put a .cpp extension on their file. And that meant that the dev C++ compiler actually called the C++ compiler instead of the C compiler. And what occurred then was there was no library implementation of that system pause function. And so what used to happen is it would come up with a linker error saying, I can't actually find this. The other place it used to happen was if something went wrong with, your inst with the installation of the compiler and maybe uh, a path to the libraries was missing so it no longer knew where to find them or it, it may not have just gone missing that the, the, those files may have been deleted for some reason or so, something accidental happened like that so again you're using the program correctly but it hasn't linked it together properly because it can't find it okay so those are the sort of linker errors and they're generally to do with the way the thing is configured or whether they they're, they're generally a problem in another file than the one you're dealing with and um, they're also generally more difficult to solve than syntax errors because syntax errors once you get used to them you can find them quite easily and and uh, uh, find your mistake a linker error is generally uh, a problem with your installation or some other issue that you're not uh, you're not managing to uh, to link up those things so it's it's a bit more difficult to find now finally uh, locating which is the third part of this so this is not something you would really have been aware of on the native compilers, such as the DevZ compiler, um, as it's that's generally handled by the operating system when the executable goes into it. So it's not really a concern. In a cross compiler, however, it is very important. So where the machine code that's generated in the hex file actually goes in the microcontroller, in other words, where it's placed is very important. Things like interrupt vectors, again, which is something we'll be, we'll be doing more on later in the course, um, they often have to be placed at a very specific address and there are sometimes parts of memory that are being used by some other system and you have to avoid those. So it's vitally important that you actually tell the system where you want to put your code and that you have that all worked out. So the locator is responsible for locating each part of the code appropriately to make sure um, it works correctly. Now, for any of you that have done some assembly language, you'll, you'll, in assembly language you will also make, often make a jump to a label or you'll jump from one location to another. It's important that when the uh, machine code that's generated for this is, is generated that if a jump is made, that that jump is made to the exact correct address. So when this goes down as machine code, it has to actually link up to exact addresses. Um, where it's actually going to, to go in the program memory. So the locator has quite a job to do to make sure that all the different references within the, the overall file all jump to the right place in order for the program to work correctly. And what it then produces is the final machine or hex code file um, that is laid out exactly as it should go into the microcontroller so that when we program it down onto the microcontroller, it just lays it out nicely in, in memory and it works correctly. So remember that when it gets down onto the microcontroller, it's no longer the C program that you started with. It's a, it's a machine code or the closest thing you can think of is an assembly language program um, where everything, every address must be exactly written in. It must know exactly where to jump and exactly where to jump back to for each of the different parts it does. So it's vitally important that that, that locator program actually has quite a job to do in order to get that right. And you can also set, um, I, I won't show it to you now, but you, we may see it uh, later in the course, where you can actually within the um, MPLAB X uh, IDE or sometimes within individual C files, you can specify that you want a piece of code to go at a particular memory location, but you can also specify in the MPLAB X uh, overall um, IDE, you can tell it where you want, uh, you know, what parts of ROM to use, what parts of program or ROM memory not to use, uh, and what are the restrictions on it so that it, the locator then knows I can't use that part, I can use this part, and this is where I'm going to try and place it. Okay, so that's all for now.